Is the Chieftain Mark VI heroic now, or is it even better than it was before? That's what we're going to find out today with the help of some epic gameplay. But first, we're going to have to have a look at the statistics of this vehicle. 3,200 DPM, 255 standard penetration. It goes up to 275 with a uh, calibrated and also 200 on the new Hesh round. 400 alpha damage for the AP. As always, I wish it had a little bit more penetration now, but that's just unfortunate. 10 degrees of gun depression, 0.3 accuracy, can be gotten down quite a lot to 0.26, so that's lovely. And an effective power to weight ratio of about 13, which is just about good enough. And here is also how I would personally equip the vehicle. Obviously, with equipment, it's like, try out this, for example, try out the default configuration. And if you feel there's something lacking that you would like to have, then try around and try out something else. Because most of the time, there is a correct thing, like, for example, the toolkit, that's always the correct thing to use, but in certain other ones, uh, like the vert stabs and stuff like that, you can use whichever one and experiment which one feels better for you. And that's really it, what is important, right? Because if you can copy what I'm using, but I always uh, encourage you to experiment yourself because that's where you're also going to get better at the game. And that's kind of the point here, right? Because if you just copy me, you're not really going to get as far as you could if you actually try and think for yourself. And something that this enemy chieftain right here isn't doing is exactly thinking, because he's just now pushing forward. And uh, that's not really great for him because he's now just pushed into a VK-90 and also a other chieftain, which is me. And aiming in this game is also very important, right? Despite this vehicle having great accuracy, if you can't aim, you are gonna miss quite a lot of your shots. So make sure to aim those shots quite well. I mean, 5,000 hours in Counter-Strike and I still can't aim, so there's that. Now, here's the thing. With the regular shift, the way it was before, it had 310 on its APCR premium round, which wasn't really all that great, but now it has a regular round that goes up to 275 millimeters of penetration and the hash with 220. So penetration was never the Chieftain's strong suit ever, really. But now it's even worse. Obviously, the hash round is going to be great for a lot of medium tanks, the sides of a lot of heavy tanks and tank destroyers. But if you are trying to engage the majority of heavies from the front, that is not going to be a good uh, way of playing this vehicle anymore. You can't pen the I-7 from the front reliably. You can't pen the 100s turret anymore. All of those kind of things will not be possible. So you want to be very careful with how you position this vehicle. And in a way, this makes this vehicle even harder to play than it already was. Because the Chieftain is sort of the leopard one of heavy tanks, in my opinion. Because it does have a very high ceiling. You can get a lot out of this vehicle. But if you're not really a good player, if you're at the start of your journey, you're way better off starting with something like a T-125 obviously in the terms of the tech tree and then going on to a concert 1b or a super conqueror because those vehicles are going to be a lot more reliable and easier to play and one of the easiest things that you can have to protect yourself is armor so let's have a look at the armor of this vehicle if that is any good the lower plate of the vehicle is a weak spot like on any other tank like ever in the entire history of the game the upper plate's about 350 millimeters so you're not going to get pinned too much there but you have to still be careful some high penetration guns are still going to be able to go right through there so the turret has a massive cupola that can be penned relatively easily so always make sure to keep the vehicle moving back and forth don't expose yourself too much and the rest of the turret it has spots that are under 300 millimeters so once again keep the vehicle moving to avoid being shot in those but generally most of the turret is over 300 millimeters thick some of them are even 400 now the side plate is a problem though because it bends out just like that which means that if you turn the vehicle to the side trying to side scrape it means it's going to get a lot thinner and you don't really want that and thin is also what the rest of the side plates are right there because there's just nothing there on the side so keep the vehicle frontal towards the enemy or use your 10 degrees of gun depression that you have to play hull down and in that way you can also sort of hide the cupola just a little bit so generally solid armor but not great However, if you know what you're doing, this vehicle is going to perform very well on the battlefield. You have the DPM, you do have quite good accuracy. You've got 10 degrees of gun depression to play a majority of positions in the game. So if you know how to place and position this vehicle well, then you're going to have great results in it. And uh, here's, a, here's a neat little trick, by the way. If you uh, drive up a hill and you don't have quite enough gun depression, try to rock the tank back and forwards a little bit because that way you can get like 
a third of a degree gun depression more so if you need that but 10 degrees is already plenty right here and this is Himmelsdorf this is one of the probably worst maps in the game in my opinion uh, put put that in the comments what maps you would love to never have to see again because for me it's Himmelsdorf and New Bay and also Diocese Pearl but put that in the comments I wonder what everybody hates in terms of maps or put down what you love if you don't hate any maps I don't know so here's the thing that guy just rushed forward I have no idea what he's doing and what I'm doing here is I'm just not gonna rush out there I'm gonna use the type and the 60 TP as a little bit of cover there because those vehicles do have better and more reliable armor now the weird thing about the chieftain is that it's also a weirdly large vehicle so you're gonna have to watch out to not get shot there because the cupola on top of the tank is very massive so you're gonna have to watch out and uh, you can't really hide in small ditches like an object 777 could for example but it can pen the front lower plate of the 777 with hesh which is very lovely so also the accuracy on this thing is just excellent like this is truly the leopard of heavy tanks right if you're a good player if you know what you're doing you're gonna do absolutely excellent and that progetto right there there is absolutely nothing he can do right now about me and that is 3700 damage from a very inopportune place right here and the only thing i really did was sort of wait for my teammates to get shot and then peek and then take a lot of damage for myself and the chieftain is really excellent at that and on a city map like this one that's kind of what you have to do in the chieftain you can't play hull down too well obviously you can hide around these kind of hills but generally that's kind of what how the chieftain works in a city engagement and now there's only one enemy left but it is the leopard so that guy's gonna run away around the map the entire time so we're gonna have to now catch him the mobility of the chieftain it's not really it's strong suit i'll put it that way i mean the, as you can see right here the acceleration it could be better but it is nowhere near the level of a super heavy so you will get around just about fine if you have to be on the other side of the map you are gonna get there so solid mobility solid gun and also solid armor so this is basically the master of none i'm good at everything kind of tank something like a t125 or a t54 e2 is as well just a little bit more advanced for the better player right here because that's the thing about the chieftain I'm always whenever i said that the chieftain's the best tank in the game I always meant for me and for a good player and i think that might still be true now that this vehicle despite now having hesh if you're really a good player it might be one of the best tanks to play if you know how to play it obviously if you're a beginner t125 60 tp e100 in terms of premium vk90 concert 1b uh, super conqueror now as well that, which since it got improved right like the super conqueror got made easier the chieftain got made harder but i don't think neither of them actually got worse they just got uh, the skill level required for the chieftain to play it well just got increased quite significantly because the hash dpm of this thing is almost 4000 which is a, a lot and with 220 pen especially fighting medium tanks yeah that's just absolutely bonkers basically so you have to know exactly how to play this vehicle and you never ever play this vehicle in a city uh, brawling against uh, high alpha damage heavy tanks like e100s or 60 tps you don't want to engage those types of vehicles this right here the fight i'm entering right now this is where the chieftain can get down and dirty we're using the gun depression obviously when i peek i'm still gonna get pen um in the lower plate but i have an alpha damage advantage i have enough dpm at 3200 sort of to keep up with this and those two amex and the e50m they don't have enough armor to defend themselves against my 220 pen hash round so this is where this chieftain lives and you can also get bounces from or rays from the side as well so we're gonna pull back here just have a go and I'll wait for those uh, two mediums to actually push the E50M because I just don't want to get shot by tank destroyers again. I know one tank destroyer is currently pushing, uh, but I don't know where the other two exactly are. Uh, the other two could both be aiming at me, so I'm just going to be a bit careful here and now push the E50M once I am invisible again. And there is a 57 Heavy over there as well. So our 183 
is in a world of trouble over there. But it is a 183, so nobody will be sad about his demise, really. Now, four versus five here. Not a great situation. What do I want to do here is we don't really have... Like, a Dead Rail is a really weird map where if you ha have the high ground, you don't have map control. And if you have the map control, you don't have high ground. And ideally, you want both. So, you kind of don't win wherever you play on this map. So, my idea here is I'm going to try to at least find where the tank destroyers are. And uh, now we have found them because the whole refired at me from that position. The uh, 121B just died right there uh, to the Vosh, so both of those tank destroyers are camping in the same position at the back, so now we're gonna evacuate again, because obviously if I try to approach those guys, they have the advantage of distance, right? They're all the way in their corner, and as long as I drive towards them, I have to go over open ground, and that's where they can fire me, right? Distance is a sort of extra armor, I've been saying that for a very long time, because but the time I take to close the distance, I'll be out in the open, I can't fire accurately because I have to stop and I have to keep going again. That's not great. And they can just sit in their bush and wait for me to appear. So I don't want to do that. And I instead, I'm going to reposition and go up here and hold the high ground. Because 3v5 is not a great position to be in. Especially when a lot of enemy ha tanks haven't even been spotted yet. So you basically know they are going to be on full HP. And that 57 Heavy is positioning himself quite well. Could have gone one uh, peg further back. Play around the rock and spawn. Because now it's still a little bit too easy for him to get shot at but that is basically what he wants to do here right or surround the team from all sides ideally have the Fosh, the hori come up behind and then surround us three up here that is the perfect course of action for the enemy team to do here and that's what we're gonna have to try to avoid right Th think of this right you always want to think what is the most opportunistic or best move that i can make and what is the best move the enemy team can make and if you avoid the enemy team being able to make that move, you already have a better chance of winning the battle. So always think ahead what can happen next. Where can the tanks be? Where are they going to be if they're smart? Where are they going to be if they're not so smart? Right? For example, the Fosh is doing exactly that. He is going for the surrounding maneuver right there. And uh, obviously, there isn't much that can be done here because the Leopard is already very low. If the enemy team would be terrible, then they all would just sit up in one position and try to go to one place. And it would be me sitting on a ridge line, the Ag Panzer behind me, and those guys getting shot because they won't peek the Ag Panzer. So they're playing this very well here and they're taking their time as well because time and also area is your friend in a lot of cases, especially the less armor you have. The more time is going to be your friend right here. And now the E4 is going to push forward. Not really optimal for him to do that. Because obviously he's very low HP. And you'd rather want the Hori and the Fosh to do such a thing. Because obviously now he's going to get taken out. And my priority right now is to take the 57 Heavy. Because the Fosh and the Hori are both going to be up here. Both are going to be full HP. So they're going to be very dangerous to deal with. Especially if I have a 57 Heavy behind me. And that's what I'm looking at right now. Because... If you're in a 1vx situation or a 2vx situation, you take out the easiest target first. Like, if there's a tank that's a one-shot, that's right in front of you, just kill them, right? You take out the thing that is the easiest to take out first. And then you take out everything else that is extremely dangerous right now. So, if obviously, if the most dangerous target is also the easiest target to take out, then just do that, obviously. But that's generally how it works. And here is the problem. Like, he's a one-shot. I know he is. And he's also easier to get to than the Fosh and the Hori, so I personally want to take out the 57 Heavy here. Now, unfortunately, that's not really what's going to happen here, because the Panzer, for some reason, has decided that he doesn't like having hit points, and he should have really had them, because if he had all his hit points, if he kept all of them, it would have been fine. But the Hori, rightfully for him, plays it perfectly and positions themselves right in the middle to simply just catch me off guard and that was a great play there by the enemies but still i did a lot of damage anyway i mean i explained more what the enemies were doing than what i was doing but that's also a very important part of getting good with a vehicle like this and that is knowing what the enemy team is currently doing and then reacting to that right because if you always just look at your uh, notes and then you always go through your notes and then the enemy team doesn't play exactly as your notes say 
you know, you're just gonna die and it's not really gonna help you whatsoever, especially in a vehicle like this that requires dynamic positioning now even more with the hash rounds of the vehicle. So, how? The enemy team has decided they don't want to contest the important part of the map and instead they do want to cap in the factory. Now, we have an object 140 pushing the heavy side, which is, uh, yeah, tends not to be a good idea. So, most of the time, but uh, it can be a good idea if your entire team pushes straight through and then takes map control, because this, this is the problem of heavy side, right? Ideally, you don't want to think like that as like, oh, medium side. You want to think in map control. It's like, where do we go that we control the map the best we can, right? And unfortunately, if you have a terrible team, they do go to the heavy side. You kind of have to also try to get as much control out of the heavy side as you can. That's what the enemy team's doing right here. They're trying to take map control, sort of, by taking the capture circle. But I'm not really bothered with that right now. I'm more bothered with this newly buffed IS-4. Obviously, with the heat hash rounds, I have no chance of attacking him whatsoever. But the 183, obviously, he's a lot bigger threat than the IS-4. So I'm going to pull back here. And he gets finished off by the Fujero. Now, this IS-4 here, he's isolated. And you'll see that all the time, what I'm doing, right? I'm never going to just jump in there and fight three tanks at the same time. I'm always going to pick myself an enemy that's currently away from the bulk of the enemy team. And I'm going to fight that one enemy alone. Because that's the easiest way to get high damage is if you're just fighting one guy and you're winning. And especially now with the Progetto also distracting the IS-4. I could just jump over here and take a shot at him right there. Obviously, I have to watch out for the Karo, but that's going to be just fine. And again, the Brugetto gets finished off by the S4, but I'm on his side, and the best thing that he can do now is wait to die. So basically, the Chieftain, is it better now? I wouldn't say so. It's definitely not better. Is it worse? If you're a really good player, no. For the average player, this is definitely going to be a massive downgrade. But if you're a really good player, I think results with this thing are going to feel quite a lot better in the future. So overall, it got worse for the average player, but I think it kind of stayed the same for the good players.